It's been a while since my last update, so to recap, I haven't noticed any strange phenomena uh, after the recent repetition of the midnight, uh, midnight, midnight man experiment. Uh, I haven't noticed any strange physical or, or mental side effects, psychological side effects from the ode to the vampire mother vampire spell or, or poem however you want to describe it I uh, haven't noticed anything unusual since watching the supposedly according to some cursed Japanese baby ogre Kleenex commercial and a uh, recap on a much older experiment I haven't noticed any strange or, or notably unusual phenomena, I haven't observed any on a daily basis that seem at all related to the house elf shrine that I've had for quite a while now. Uh, to recap on some of the things I've done with it since starting the experiment, I've added a couple objects to the shrine itself and I've made sure that whenever there's a, a feast or a, a celebration of sorts to include the shrine and in that way you know include the house elf by placing some sort of specific food from the meal a small amount of it on the shrine not like just you know slamming a turkey on there you get the idea and uh, it hasn't resulted in anything that I've been able to directly observe as stand out uh, someone could argue sh you know small statistical variance in different things that are slightly influenced by a house elf, but as far as strictly paranormal phenomena that I've observed, something that seemed completely out of the ordinary and required a, a paranormal uh, explanation, I haven't noticed any. I also wanted to mention a couple of comments that I received from uh, peers not just because I want to start reading some of the comments in the update videos and you know engage you in, in more of a, a way that makes each of you see each other's uh, more notable comments because some of them are, are very noteworthy uh, worth all of you hearing where you might not see it if it's in a YouTube comment for example one of them uh, wasn't actually on YouTube at all it was a, a message I received on Facebook and uh, it was from Spencer Arlington and uh, basically they asked me if I could ask all of you if any of you know of uh, locations in Colorado that are in any way related to the paranormal or the occult and the reasoning was that uh, Spencer said that he would hope to go to any of these locations and check them out himself possibly recording a video of it and then send me the video or upload the video himself I, I think is also an option but I think that's noteworthy and possibly if any of you live in Colorado you could even contact him and uh, that way you wouldn't have to go alone for example in case in case it's you know someplace that's more derelict or abandoned there's always the possibility that you run into someone that's squatting there you might not you know love visitors even if the odds of that are remote. Um, so in the comments, or you can email me directly, if you know of any locations in Colorado that are related to the paranormal or occult that you think would be interesting for Spencer to check out, um, go ahead and let me know, and I'll try to let him know. Also, um, if that inspires any of you to you know, contact each other and check out strange locations in your area, any location that is commonly reported to have paranormal phenomena why not go check it out right and you can I don't think YouTube does the whole video response thing anymore but if you link it to me I can link it on this channel and that way everybody that comes here can see it there sound good I don't know why I asked you it's not like never mind the other uh, response I got contacted me um, Haven Ruiz is their name and they told me that they know a curse that will paralyze my legs. <laughs> and they said that they would need a lock of my hair 
my picture and that the bond, I imagine, of the curse itself, the bond of the curse, would be stronger if I also sent them some of my blood and tears. Uh, I contacted them and asked them uh, about some of the details of, of exactly how much hair they need since I recently cut my hair. I don't have as much left as... Uh, anyway, and how much blood since it dries easily. And uh, I'm working out the details with them. But I thought I would mention it here, just in case they're watching this, to really stress that I'm up for this one in particular. I've, I've had a lot of people contact me about curses they want to try and attempt since um, October when I did the original Curse Me project experiment and uh, I, I haven't been doing general curses since then so that there's no chance, well there's less chance of it interfering with current experiments. Instead I was just taking the month of October to isolate attempts to curse me and then looking for a general ill fortune among you know my life in general caused by the curses since a lot of them aren't specific. You can curse somebody they just have bad luck which is incredibly hard to you know quantify outside of just people claiming it's coincidence. But this one specifically says it'll paralyze my legs. So I'm still up for it even though it's not October. Since it's got such a, you know, specific purpose, it's really hard if all of a sudden my legs become paralyzed to argue it was anything other than this person's attempt at a curse. So, if you're watching this, uh, Haven Ruiz, just to stress, I'm completely up for this. Please contact me and we can work out the details of how exactly I'm going to send you my hair and blood and tears. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention that I'm going to be doing in the update videos from now on is a bit of a more parapsychological angle. And uh, some of you, if you remember the ESP video I did um, months ago, you might kind of recognize this. To explain exactly what it is and how you'll be able to take part in it, if you go to random.org, um, an easy site to find, an easy site to use, you can see that it allows you to generate uh, very well randomized alphanumeric sequences. And you can put in how many characters long you want them to be, and uh, you can adjust them in a, in a couple other ways. But if you leave them normal, it'll give you an eight character long alphanumeric sequence. And uh, a few examples of an alphanumeric sequence, if you're not sure what that is, if you've never heard of it before, uh, no problem, I'm going to explain. In, in the shortest explanation would be that it's simply a string of characters that can be either letters or numbers. Alphabet, alpha, numeral, numeric, you get the idea. Letters, numbers. Um, a few examples of the exact one you'll be shooting for, an eight character one. I'll elaborate on what I mean by shooting in a second. Would be J D J S U P C N. Now you might notice that one's all letters. Just because it's alphanumeric doesn't mean it can't by chance end up being all letters or all numbers. And of course any mix in between. For example, C Y nine M M R nine L. So there you get letters and numbers. That's completely common. And then Z C C P two Y three U is another example of a mix of letters and numbers. But like I said, of course, it can come out by chance as all letters or all numbers. And uh, in case uh, anyone here who isn't using the English alphabet wants to take an attempt. Obviously, yes, it, it is in the English alphabet. And the numbers, I don't think I need to stress that part. The website does give it to you in upper and lower case, but I'm not going to worry about that as much. If you land a spot on alphanumeric eight character uh, sequence and you didn't capitalize the H, but random.org did, it's not a big deal because the odds of you getting an alphanumeric sequence of eight characters correct is very, very impressive. And obviously uh, we could experiment further from there. So what I've done is I've had a friend go to random.org and write down an eight character sequence alphanumeric 
and they stuck it in this envelope. And it's only sealed with a piece of tape so that I can reuse the envelope every week and not be wasteful. But I'm not going to open this until the next update video, most likely one week from now. And we'll see whoever comments on this video here and came close or got it correct. If anybody did get it correct, please expect me to contact you. And if you do make a guess and you're really hoping to try to get it correct, please understand that I do expect to contact you if you get this correct. I do expect to work with you more if you get this correct. And at the same time, don't feel bad if you don't. Please try next week and next week and next week. And I might even try, you know, getting my friends to submit some guesses and I might toss my own hat in as well. Um, I also wanted to mention some recent reading I've been doing. Uh, a couple books that I got for Christmas, uh, gifts. One was uh, Parapsychology, The Controversial Science by Richard S. Broughton. And you can go to his website, um, rsbroughton.com, and you can read all about him, his PhD, and uh, everything he's done in related to in relation to research into parapsychology and uh, I think it's a worthwhile read and I think that there's a lot even on just his website to learn if you take the links obviously not entirely on his site but it's interesting and I thought I would mention it so far I think the uh, book is a really good resource and uh, it's part of what's gotten me more motivated to uh, make sure that I, I keep doing some general ESP related experiments and an ongoing one like the alphanumeric sequences I think is a, a really good uh, side experiment. There was something else uh, I wanted to mention. Um, oh, I received the very first letter in the mail in case you don't know, I have the address up on uh, the description below every video so that you can send me cursed objects, Ouija boards, anything if you want to get rid of them, if you want me to try things out with them. And somebody did mail me um, a letter and their business card and some other, well, some information in the letter itself. And it does relate to the paranormal, uh, but I haven't actually heard back from them yet on whether or not I have permission from them to read the letter in the video but uh, I'm waiting to hear back from them, and if they say yes, then in the next update you can expect to hear what this was about. Um, I think that wraps it up, and it's 13 minutes, so it's a lot longer than I figured for an update. Uh, be sure, again, to get your alphanumeric guess in the comments below. Eight letters long, sorry, eight characters long, letters or numbers. And uh, if you don't want to put it in the comments, you can email it to me, and we can keep this completely discreet. Nobody has to know. And you'll have a week to guess, so if this video is a week old and you guess, I won't be able to count it because you'll just be able to go to the video seven days from now and check what it was, then go back to this video and guess, just to be clear. And thanks again, everybody, for the peer review, and thanks for taking part in the experiments. And uh, helping out in general through suggestions and ideas.